Hey everybody, Bob Brown here. So fair warning, this is gonna be a long one. <laughs> uh, and then I'm gonna add some other videos after this. I don't have any arm wrestlers here, uh, so things I'll explain now you'll see videos of. But we're gonna talk about the straps again. And uh, you know, I knew that when I made that video, it was gonna create a debate, and sure did. So, uh, to refresh one's memories, the, the video I made was about, and I made some notes here because it's kind of long, uh, about the fairness of the strap. And what I was referring to was the fact that when a referee tightens it down to whatever they think is appropriate, that if one guy wants it tight, tighter, it doesn't seem fair without the other guy agreeing to it. Like, in my opinion, you should, the referee should tighten it down to whatever is appropriate. The guys go and get their grip, and whether it loosens up or not, if the two guys don't agree on what to do with the strap after that, it just stays the way the ref put it. That was my contention. Well, it led to a lot of other discussions. Uh, it led to is there an advantage from one side of the strap to the other side of the strap? Which I contend, in my opinion, that there is. That the, the way we wrap the strap does fundamentally create an advantage. Some people refer to it as the buckle side or the non-buckle side, but to me, the buckle itself, the fact that the buckle is on the back of your hand is not what creates the advantage. And we'll go into it. Um, it was also brought up they, when the Dallas uh, Langston uh, Craig Toulier match happened, that uh, the strap must be too loose because there was a photo of Craig who had Dallas's hand, yet the palms came apart, and therefore the strap must be too loose, which brought up the question of the intent of the strap. You know, should there be. Well, I'll get into it, okay? Um, uh, the debate, like I said, it took several aspects from the application of the strap, whether there's an advantage left and right of the strap, whether there's an advantage, whether it's tighter or looser, uh, and then what is the strap's original in, or actual intent? Is the strap meant to force you to stay palm to palm or just simply meant to hold you together so you don't have a complete slip again. Uh, in short, my contention is the reason for the strap is just simply to keep you from slipping completely apart. And we start palm to palm in the strap as we do out of the strap. But then once the ref says go, if you can climb someone's finger, climb someone's thumb because the strap has loosened up a little bit and you're able to do that, then in my opinion, that's fantastic. Uh, some people disagree. Um, so I've never actually felt the need to prove that there's an advantage to one side or another uh, because quite frankly, I didn't really care if people thought there was an advantage the people who don't think there's an advantage, I don't know why they'd care that someone thinks there's an advantage, but lo and behold, here we are. Um, and then I also didn't feel the need to prove it because you know I know hundreds of arm wrestlers from novice all the way up to the highest elite that all agree there is an advantage to being on one side of the strap versus the other. And so I never really felt the need to prove it. Um, but, uh, I'm being told that I'm wrong because I have no evidence or I have no proof. And so I thought, okay, well, let's see if I can figure this out. And so down the rabbit hole I went and man, did I go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> um, in order to first, I wanted to talk to some people to see if they felt I was correct as far as the whole palm to palm versus just simply meant to keep you t 
together or not. So I wanted to talk to a lot of arm wrestlers and referees and people who, whose opinions uh, I think are very valid. Uh, I spoke with Leonard Harkless, head ref of the IFA, former head ref of the WAF. Luke Pulcher, he's a, a head ref of the, or he's a ref of the WAF. Uh, and quite frankly, the most logical, even-headed, moderate thinker, you know, I know about this. And I always bounce stuff off of him because he usually calls me on my crap, <laughs> you know. Uh, I talked to Dallas Langston himself. I cost, of course, I talked to Craig Toyer. I called up Christian Benny because I know Christian Benny thinks that all top rollers slash hand wrestlers going into the strap are, you know, a bunch of cupcakes and we should be staying in the hook all the time as he is a purist power hook style puller. And I figured he would be against me in my thought process. I called John Wilson because he was a little bit part of the debate. Someone whose opinion I respect greatly uh, and a pretty knowledgeable guy. I spoke with a Kirill Bognansky. Kirill is the one I believe who also agrees there is an advantage. He tried to create a strap that he thought took away the advantage, so there'd be no advantage, where it went around your hand this way, and but still went around your wrist. But anyway, just someone who I thought probably agreed with me that there's an advantage and was looking for a solution because he was trying to create a new strap. Uh, I talked to Derek Smith because he was also involved in the debate. Uh, I called Rick Pinckney, who is a head ref up in Canada, someone else I greatly respect when it comes to the rules, and he's been around longer than me, so he could speak to the intent of the strap and, and things like that. And then finally, once I felt that I was, you know, correct here, uh, I talked to Todd Hutchins because I had a way where I thought I could prove it. And so, and he's a mechanical engineer. For those of you who don't know, he, he's an engineer. Of course, he's an arm wrestler. You all know him as an arm wrestler. And he is one who doesn't think there is an advantage from one side of the strap to the other. So I'm like, this guy's perfect. If, if he can help me prove this, well then, awesome. So the first thing we did, I asked him, and you're gonna have to picture this now. I said, if you take two pulleys, I'm gonna stop for a second. The reason I ask this question is because Devin Lorette came up with the fairer strap, as we call it, where when you wrap it around the last wrist, it used to just come underneath everything and we tied it together. Well, he discovered it would be more fair if we wrapped it through the where the strap came underneath the other part of the hand and it would be more equal. And when we all started doing that, because it got adopted into the WAF, I, I agree with him that it did seem to be more fair and, and then great, but there was still a, a slight amount of advantage, in my opinion. So I thought, huh, we moved the strap from the bottom and we moved it up a little bit. So I'm like, what I'm thinking at the moment was where the strap comes around the last wrist through and up that must be where this advantage comes from the way it's wrapped around the last wrist so I called up Todd and I wanted to know imagine two poles you got a rope coming down the pole up to this pole and down on the ground you've got a pulley that's chained down to the ground and so the rope goes down underneath the pulley back up and the amount of force it would take to pull this pole over from this side. So I said, if, it, if the height of the pulley made a difference and he said, yes, it does. And I thought, awesome. He's about to prove my theory. I'm feeling wonderful. And then he explains this. He says, imagine for a second that the pulley isn't down here at the bottom of the rope. 
imagine that we lift the pulley all the way up to where it's even with the two attachment points of the pole. Therefore, basically the pulley's out of the equation. And so all the force that you can generate, and let's call it a hundred pounds, all hundred pounds of that force is pulling on this pole. And I was like, okay, if the, if the pulley is now lower, and so now this guy's got to pull up, it goes down through the pulley and up because of angles and height of the pulley. He says, the lower the pulley, the less amount of force on the pole will be applied with that same hundred pounds of pulley. So the strap being lower makes it, uh, makes you weaker. And I thought, crap, he just, that completely disproves my theory because the old way we used to wrap the strap went underneath all of the hands. And I'm thinking that, that low pulling part is gonna be the difference. And he said, no. He said, it's the exact opposite. The higher the pulley, the greater the advantage. And I was like, okay, I, I might have to eat crow here. And it's a lot of crow. So I was like, wow. But in my mind, I'm like, man, I've been arm wrestling for a lot of years. I've tested this back and forth with the same guy multiple times, with different guys back and forth multiple times. In my mind, I'm like, there is definitely an advantage. Plus so many other people think there's an advantage. I, I, I'm looking at this wrong. And then, um, and then I literally woke up in the middle of the night and I had a second theory. I'm like, wait a minute. Where does the advantage actually come from? Again, I'm gonna make another, once there's arm wrestlers here tonight's practice, uh, I'm gonna make another video showing this. But if you can picture, if we're talking about a right-handed match and I'm the guy on the right, okay? Uh, the strap is dangling between our thumbs. The ref, starting ref is on this side right here, the, the buckle is, and the first place the strap goes is down the back of my hand, underneath, and across to this guy's wrist. That's the first place it goes. Mm -hmm. Now, let's assume for a second that the two guys close their thumbs at that point. All we've done so far is wrapped it around this guy's wrist. That's it. Down the back of the hand, across and over to this guy's wrist. And somehow we wrapped it around a few times and just kept it there. So now I'll face this way. So when the guy who just has it going down the back of his hand kicks his hand like this, well, what does it do to the wrist of the other guy? It just simply, it bends his wrist backwards. So because the pulley's coming down, across, around this wrist, when he kicks his hand back, this guy's wrist then folds towards him, okay? Then of course, you wrap it around uh, my wrist, back up through, you tighten it down, same thing applies. If everyone's just loose and this guy kicks his wrist back, this guy's wrist buckles. Vice versa, if the other guy kicks his wrist back, then my wrist buckles. That's, you know, where the pressure is coming from the strap. It's coming from underneath the strap as you either kick your wrist back or top roll and pronate because your wrist is going or the bottom of your hand is going back or you kick back this way, the bottom of your hand is moving this direction. All these things, the force comes through that strap around the other guy's wrist, attempting to kick each other's wrist back. And what dawned on me is where the strap comes down off of my hand, and since it was the first one to come underneath, around, when then you go around my wrist and back up, the one that came off of the back of my hand is higher than the one that comes back off of the, off of the buckle side. Because if you trace, chase, or <laughs> trace the buckle side down, it, also comes across to my wrist, but where it crosses under my wrist, it is below 
the one that came off the back of my hand and went under the wrist. They cross each other like this. They, they overlap each other, okay? So if the pulley theory is correct, then the higher the strap, the more, if we both can apply an equal 100 pounds of pressure, then more of my 100 pounds of pressure is gonna get exerted on this guy's wrist than the other way around. And so I was trying to explain this to Todd. I called him again, of course, and, and I'm explaining this to him. And we actually swapped some photos of, uh, and I'll try to, I don't know if I can put a photo in this thing, but I'll see if I can figure it out. And uh, so we could kind of communicate when we're looking at the same object. And we never came to any conclusion. He had to end the call, you know, and you know, he, 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 uh, he hung up the phone. So then uh, later he texted me and he says, hey, I got a way I can figure out whether the buckle matters or not. I said, great. So call him right back up. What is it? And he goes into a statistical analysis. He was saying that what I was trying to prove is from a first point analysis. And I'll be honest, I don't know what that means. Um, just like a direct point. And he came up with a statistical way by videoing, looking at video of tons of matches and seeing which side of the buckle went. Um, and that would be the ultimate way to prove it. And I completely agree. Uh, I feel the data would, we would need a lot of matches because there's a lot of variables that come into the match more than just the strap. You know, I honestly think that the advantage from one side to the other is not a particularly huge advantage. You know, you put, you know, John Brzezink against the novice, and I don't care where the strap is, it just ain't gonna matter, okay? But the most prolific example, at least, that I've seen is Ryan Bowen versus Chance Shaw. If you look at that match, every time either Ryan or Chance did not have the buckle on their hand, they won that match, every time, all five. Now, that's not proof at all. It's just a little evidence that shows that maybe there's something to my theory, okay? Uh, I believe Ryan's looked at some other matches and, uh, you know, it's, it's further shown evidence that possibly this theory is correct. But I agree with Todd. The more data, the better, you know? And when you're dealing with pros, you know, what John Wilson said, when you're dealing with pros, a lot of these guys, they know how to adjust themselves for being on the good side or the bad side. And it'd be better just to look at amateurs, you know, because they don't really know what they're doing. And, uh, and I had talked to Todd about that. He actually agreed that, yeah, you know, honestly, that'd probably be the best place to look is to look at amateurs. Um, let's see here. I told you this was going to be a long one. Uh, and then, you know, when he came up with the statistical method, the coin flip method, I'm like, well, that's gonna take a lot of time and I don't know if people will actually get enough data. I mean, I, I don't know if people would just do it. So what I thought would be best is, my theory is that this advantage only really reels, rears its ugly head when you got two top rollers trying to pronate and they're relatively equal in strength, you know? And, and then you can really see it. And then Todd's like, well, that doesn't prove it. I agree, it doesn't prove it. But if I can at least show the existence of it where I think it takes place, well then I'm just gonna shut up and go home because I must be completely wrong if I cannot show at least examples where I think it is. But we have shown some examples of where we think it is, and so it warrants more investigation. But to me personally, once Todd told me about the higher pulley versus lower pulley, you know, situation, like I ended up calling him back up and I'm like, I just wanna make sure I understand this. So 
You got the two poles again, and now let's do it differently. You got a guy standing on this pole, the rope goes down through a pulley and attaches to this pole. You got a guy standing on this pole, it goes down through a pulley, it attaches to this pole. One pulley is higher than the other. Does the guy with the higher pulley have to pull with, will all of his force translate to the pole as much as the guy on this one down to the other pole? And basically the answer was the higher the pulley, the easier it was for this guy to pull over the other guy's pole. Because imagine if the pulley again was all the way up at the top and he could pull 100 pounds of force. All 100 pounds of force are pulling this thing. But the lower one, a much lesser amount of that 100 pounds of force is actually making it through the pulley, pulley up to the other pole. So in conclusion, the higher the pulley, the better it is. And when I look at that strat, how one strat, they overlap each other, one of them is higher than the other. So to me, that was enough thought process for me to just be more convinced that I'm correct. Um, but I admit it's still not, you know, scientific proof. You know, I, I'll, I'll admit that. Um, let's see, obviously. You know, Todd and I, we also discovered a, a seesaw theory. Take a seesaw, have it be perfectly balanced. You got the fulcrum in the middle and it's perfectly balanced. Now take that fulcrum, move it to the left, just an inch. So now it's slightly off balance. If you remove a bunch of variables, the seesaw generally dip this way, right? If you move the fulcrum this way an inch, the seesaw is generally gonna dip this way, which means who's ever sitting on that side has a slight advantage over this side. And then he was like, well, what if the seesaw is a mile long? I'm like, yeah, you're, I mean, that advantage is gonna be so minute, you're, you're never even gonna see it. And to me, the mile long seesaw reflects to all arm wrestling matches. And then I'm like, but if the seesaw is only two feet long and it's offset an inch, well then that's a much better you'll see the seesaw dip to one side. Um, and to me, the two foot long seesaw represents the two top rollers that are both trying to pronate against each other. And you know, you'll, you'll see it. Um, and, and that was, you know, basically the discussion. And is it absolute proof? No, uh, I, don't, I don't think it is. Um, is it, in my opinion, enough evidence to sway some people? I think it should be, maybe it's not, you know? And, and at the end of the day, I don't really care whether people believe the strap has an advantage or disadvantage. I believe it has an advantage. Um, I also talked to Todd about this, the symmetricalness of the strap. And I learned a couple words. Symmetrical means it's a perfect mirror image of each other. The strap is perfectly applied equally on both sides. Asymmetrical means it is not perfectly applied symmetrically. And he agrees that there are, excuse me, three different reasons why the strap is not asymmetrical. I mean, for the fact one side's got a buckle, the other side doesn't. So right there, it's not symmetrical. When you tighten down the strap, you're actually pulling down on one person's hand and up on another person's hand. So that's not symmetrical. That can be fixed in my opinion by the way it's applied. You just make sure them palms are super even. You know, when you pull it down, maybe you even nudge up this one a little bit to offset the pressure of it coming down. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's the wrapping underneath where it does overlap each other. So they're not perfectly symmetrical. And I'm like, but that's not just because something, and I agree with them, just because something is not perfectly even or asymmetrical doesn't mean that there's an advantage to one side or the other. It, at least there's no proof to that. 
And so of course, me, I want the sport to be fair, you know? Um, some people don't think I want the sport to be fair, but I honestly do. My contention in the should we stay palm to palm or not goes back to, you know, the second the top roll was invented, this sport effectively changed from arm wrestling to hand wrestling. Um, some people like it, some people don't like it. I'm sure that when the forward pass was invented, there was a lot of football people who thought that was stupid, but I think it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the top roll makes it exciting. You have to be strong from shoulder all the way to the tips of your fingers. And so, you know, even before I ever started arm wrestling, there's guys that would sing, they would back pressure against the fingertips of an opponent to then gain leverage, because that's where everyone's their weakest, right? At their fingertips to gain leverage on the wrist, to then fold back the wrist of this guy and then try to win. Because let's face it, most people, when they lose their wrist, they lose, okay? Todd Hutchins, not so much. Jerry Kettoret, not so much, right? But most people, when they lose their hand and wrist, they lose the match. So if I can leave palm to palm, apply pressure to your fingertips, crack back the wrist, clamp on top of your hand, which now admittedly, because I've done that, you have effectively lost your grip and are in a bad position. Now I wanna to try to finish you, but we slip apart. I can't finish you. So then it's my contention, well, if I'm able to do that move inside the straps, why can't I try to do that move outside the straps? And that's where the whole, or I'm sorry, if I can do that move outside the straps, why can't I do it inside the straps? And that comes down to the tightness of the strap. The tighter you apply our current strap, you are forcing these people to stay palm to palm, okay? All of a sudden, the back pressure guy cannot get pressure on the fingers. He has to come just straight through the wrist. And I'm like, well, I don't think that's particularly fair. Other people think I'm wrong, that you should stay palm to palm. And okay, that's just a difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. But the way I've been thinking, because people in the straps have still, you know, had a little bit looser strap, fought into the fingertips, and climbed up the thumb so far that they were, the strap was literally holding the hands together. You know, you're holding on to just a little bit of the strap and you're holding them together and, and you beat them, right? And I see no problem with that. Um, the only reason I was able to get to that position in the first place is because I must have had the strength to pull through your fingers. You know, so my reply would be that the other guy needs to get his hand stronger to stop me from doing that, or maybe change the way that they arm wrestle. You know, you have to adapt. Um, but that's, you know, that's opinion based. But to me, it's been this way since before I ever arm wrestled. People have been leaving palm to palm since before I ever arm wrestled. People have been leaving palm to palm in a strap since before I ever arm wrestled. So to me, I think the strap's singular purpose is just to stop us from coming apart completely. So this is where I wanted to get everyone's opinion on the whole palm to palm versus leaving palm to palm in the strap's opinion. You know, and this is where I called Leonard, Luke, Dallas, Craig, Christian, John Wilson, Kirill Bodinsky, Derek, Rick. I called all of them and all of them agreed that the intent of the strap is not necessarily to just force us to remain palm to palm. We all have to start there. We all agree we should all start palm to palm. 
even so much as maybe, I mean, completely palm to palm. No trying to get an advantage by making a pocket or anything. Just palm to palm at the go. Uh, then apply the strap, but when they say go, all is fair in love and war. Climb out of the palm, get pressure onto the, you know, fingers and go. And uh, the intent of the strap is just simply to keep us from completely slipping apart. We like to have a fair strap. I think our strap, in my opinion, I think there is an advantage. I'd like to get rid of that advantage. I think I've come up with a way. It's very simple. Use the exact same strap we have, only there, and it is in the rules, and pretty much every ref does it, everybody does this. If the ref is on this side, he always wraps the closest forearm first. So if we're right-handed, this guy's forearm is closer to him. And so it'll go down the back of my hand and around his forearm and then around my forearm. And vice versa, if we're left-handed, it'll go down the back of this guy's hand, but he's gonna wrap my forearm first because we're left-handed and now that one's closer to him. Mm -hmm. So here's my solution. And we've done a little bit of testing. Mm -hmm. Wrap the other guy's forearm first. Still come down the back, right-handed again, still come down, the ref's over here, still come down the back of my hand. But as soon as you come under, immediately go around my wrist then go under and go around that guy's wrist, still fish it through, come up, tighten it down. Now, except for the fact that there is a buckle, which again, my contention is the buckle itself doesn't offer any advantage or disadvantage. It is perfectly symmetrical, 100% symmetrical. So if there was an advantage one side to the other, it would certainly be gone now. And so I tested it, you know, just to practice. And sure enough, I noticed two things. One, advantage and the disadvantage I felt, in my opinion, was gone. But what I really liked about it is it felt so much more similar to arm wrestling outside the strap. I could still get a real deep hook. I could still climb up a guy's thumb. I could still get pressure on the fingers. So when you're inside the current strap, I think there's a, I think we all feel there's a pretty big difference between outside the strap to inside the strap. I don't think there should be such a huge difference, right? So this way, outside the strap versus inside this new way, there's, there was, it felt really close to arm wrestling outside the strap. So I thought, well, you know, we got to test this. So I called up uh, Leonard Harkless and I told him my idea. And he's like, wow, interesting. Well, let's see. Well, as it turns out, he had a tournament coming up that weekend. And so he did it in the tournament. And there was no problems. It worked great. No one said a word. It's perfect. I then contact uh, Kirill Bode. Bogdansky, the one who was also trying to figure out a new strap. And I, now I told him my idea and he's like, huh, interesting. He's going to try it. He tried it out. He reported back, thought it was incredible. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Ironically, all three of us, me, Leonard and Kirill, all discovered that we should be having our elbows closer together when we tie it because here is the possible downside. Mm -hmm. And after talking to Devin Lorette, he tested it a little bit a long time ago. So Devin already tried this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And the problem was the hands did come completely apart again. Well, that would be a problem since in my opinion, the only reason for the strap is to keep us together. And if we're gonna start coming apart, well then, but I asked him how much, like how often did you come apart? And he says, well, it wasn't very often, but you know, it could happen. So we're testing it. And in my opinion, you know, even if it came apart, I don't know, five or 10% of the time, the fact that, and again, I'll make an assumption, the fact that it solves a advantage disadvantage problem, 
the fact that it is more like arm wrestling outside the straps when you're inside the straps than our current strap. For those two reasons alone, heck, if it comes apart 10% of the time, I, I wouldn't care. I know, I know a lot of people would, and I understand why they would. Um, but when Leonard tested it at a tournament, it never came apart. And we're going to do more tests. So that's my plea to you guys now. Do me a favor. Give it a shot at your practices. You know, not at tournaments, just at practices. <laughs> the, the ref's over here putting it on. So the buckle's right there. The strap goes down, but now wrap the far wrist first. Come around the near wrist. You still got to fish it through. Come up, tighten it down. I highly suggest that when you're putting the strap on that both competitor's elbows are in the very front of the pad. And then let me know what you think, you know. Um, with my current investigation into the strap, with the whole pulley system discussion, the seesaw discussion, the fact that the strap lays on top of one another, um, the fact that I you know, can pull on the bottom part of the wrist and see this guy's wrist buckle to know that's where the wrist is buckling. In my opinion, again, opinion, to me, in my mind, this proves 100% that there is a advantage from one side to the other. I realize that doesn't prove it to the world and it shouldn't prove it to the world. Everyone should prove it to yourselves or, you know, we'll wait for this uh, statistical analysis to be done, which I don't know if we'll ever have enough data to do it. I really wish we did. I mean, I wish we had all these matches analyzed for a million different reasons. I mean, we'd have statistics like they got in baseball. I think that would be awesome. But, you know, it is what it is at this point. So, anyway, that's my going down the rabbit hole on the strap. Uh, I'm sure I forgot something, but I will be adding some more videos to the end of this demonstrating what I'm talking about uh, with the strap. So, and if I think of something else, I'll add something else at the end. But, thanks for listening. I knew this was a long one. Sorry for that. Have a great day. All right, Bob Brown here. I'm gonna show you those wraps I was telling you about earlier. This is Emmanuel, he's gonna help us out. So we're gonna assume that the starting referee is right here. And the first thing that happens is it comes down behind my hand and crosses over to his wrist. And let's just wrap it around a couple times, okay? And I, what I want you to do is just hold it there, okay? Close your thumb. Just hold it with your finger so everyone can see. See, now when I just simply pull the bottom of my hand out, see how his wrist is buckling, okay? Because this bottom part of the strap is pulling right here on his wrist. The tighter the strap would be, the more I would pull. Like, there's a little bit of looseness in this, so I've got to pull a little bit, he doesn't even move, but when I pull a lot, he starts to move. If it was tighter, if we really tighten that thing, let's do it this way. Now it's tight, now just relax your wrist. When I pull, it instantly starts to move. Okay, you can see that, I hope. So now we're gonna put it on normal. So it's coming down, it goes around him, it crosses over to me, and then, hold on, it's got a fish through here, can with my fingers comes up and I'm not particularly putting this thing on super tight I'm just going to show you here okay so now we'll just close our hands and we're going to relax so just relax right he's, he's ready to just go <laughs> so if I kick my wrist back you see his wrist buckle now kick your wrist back and my wrist buckles. I'm hoping you guys can see that on the camera. Okay? So it really comes, the pressure to bust this guy's wrist back comes from the straps that we wrap underneath. So now I don't know if I can pick this up.
The first one comes underneath, wraps around his hand. Then it crosses over to me. Now let me have it. Through here. No, nope, hand it, just hand it to me, like that. And you'll see that this one, when our hands are tight, is still overlapping that first one that came across, okay? So the one that came off of his, the, this one now that's coming off of the back of his hand is lower than the one that's coming off of the back of my hand. And where it's underneath, that's what I'm calling the pulley. So my pulley is higher than his pulley means when I apply force this way versus him applying force the other way, I don't have to apply as much force in order to achieve my goal. Give me a second, partner. And so that is the reason, in my opinion, that the strap gives us an advantage. Because those two straps, this one that comes down off the back of his hand, this is the one that would get tied into the buckle, where it comes down off the back of his hand is lower than the one that originally went underneath and is higher. And that's where I feel the advantage comes from. Have a good one. Howdy, Bob Brown. Naturally, I got all the arm wrestlers last night. I filmed the other strap. I never filmed the new strap, so I'm a bozo. But I have my wife here helping me today. So, so now, I'm gonna put the strap, same place. Again, the referee's here, buckles on her side. Only this time, normally we would wrap this forearm first. But now we're gonna wrap my forearm first. So for the referee's perspective, it's the far forearm. Go around hers, fish it through, and then attach it. And now in our working with this, we discovered that we want the elbows all the way in the front so the wrists are as close as they can be. And then you really can crank this down as best you want, right? So here's another benefit that I like. It gives really fluid, you don't feel like you're in a strap. Just bend your wrist a little bit like that. And go back and forth. And see, it really moves freely. Plus, the top roller can still apply pressure up onto her fingers, and the hooker can still use his hand pressure to drag or move forward, but it would still take hand pressure to do that. Um, fingertip pressure. Uh, and so this time, go up my thumb. So see, she can get pressure on my thumb and you really feel like you're outside the straps in at least way more so than the other strap. But you can crank this down as hard as you want. Now, let me show you the difference underneath the straps. Let's see, you'll notice it only crosses one time. The other ones, I'm gonna loosen it up a little so you can see it better. There you go. See, there's the one that goes around my wrist and around her wrist, but underneath, it only crosses one strap is all, okay? you go so I think it's a better system simply because again in my opinion the intent of the strap is just to hold you together um, I realized that when we added the strap into the game it functionally changed the game and if all it ever did was change the game evenly I'd be square and we wouldn't have an issue to me though, I do feel there is an advantage to one side. Hopefully through this entirely long video, you would agree with me. Um, I understand some people won't, but this way it gets rid of the 
problem because outside of the fact that it had a buckle, that strap is perfectly symmetrical. There's no advantage to one side or the other. You actually feel like you're arm wrestling outside the straps, which in my opinion is better, you know? Uh, so to me, it's a better system. Uh, we've tested it in practices. We did test it in a tournament and didn't have any issues. Now I do see a potential problem when you know, you break back a man's hand and the other guy comes in on a flop wrist press, okay? That's where we might have an issue. Um, to me, if that happens, you know, one out of 20, one out of 30 times, I personally would be okay with that because effectively it's a perfectly fair strap. It feels more like regular arm wrestling, you have free motion of your wrist and your hand and your back pressure and your cupping and everything. And uh, I just personally think it's a better system. So uh, there you have it. Hopefully this is all you ever need to know about a strap. Um, actually, I will add another thing. Another key point in a strap is it loosening up to me isn't so much of a problem. But if it starts working its way backwards through the buckle, now that's a problem. This strap right here, it's relatively thin. I used it with my wife just so it wouldn't hurt when we put it on. This strap here is a relatively thicker material and where it crosses through, there's these little teeth on here to bite on hard. This strap is hard to get on, but I'm telling you, this thing ain't ever coming apart. I mean, you put Michael Todd and Jerry Cataret in this strap, I do not think it's coming apart. It doesn't work its way backwards through the strap. We definitely need to do some more testing. Uh, like I said, I've already thought of an issue that we might encounter, but uh, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this incredibly long, painful trip down the rabbit hole of the strap. <laughs> Have a great day.